What's up everybody? I'm John. Isaac is behind the camera. We are Cars and Cameras and today we are back working on our four-wheel drive Ford Bronco Power Wheels go-kart build. We had to take a couple of weeks off from this project to gather parts because when you're doing four-wheel drive on something this size, there aren't really many factory options. You can either steal the front end out of a four-wheel drive ATV or you can go completely custom, which is kind of what we're doing. So we have uh, an array of parts displayed beneath us here. We have some hubs from GoPowerSports.com. We have some ATV axles and new bearings we bought from a friend who owns a bearing store. Thank you, Shane. Uh, and we have some parts from a uh, tractor supply. Some of you may notice that we're doing an independent front suspension on this setup rather than a solid axle like we originally talked about. Uh, when we got to it, planning this front suspension, we discovered that uh, independent suspension would be easier to set up, it would be more effective, and it would uh, be lighter weight as well. So that was enough to convince the both of us that independent suspension is the way to go. So like with any custom project we're probably going to run into a speed bump or two but let's just get right into it so we went out and bought this gigantic piece of heavy gauge square tubing and it is going to basically be our bearing hanger for the front end and it's going to be what we're going to uh, weld off of for like where ball joints mount and stuff like that so we need to cut two of these we can slide them on our bearings and then i think ike will have something to show you guys more visually for the setup We've been doing a lot of brainstorming this morning, uh, and we have a rough idea of how our four-wheel drive system is going to work. But before we can permanently mount anything, we need to mount our Tillotson 228 engine and engine plate, both from GoPowerSports.com. You can check them out at links in the description of this video. Um, because basically the entire front suspension is going to be built off of the bottom and the sides of this heavy-duty engine plate. So we need some tubes that come down off the front of the frame and another tube to come crossways to mount to the back of the engine plate and then we can start mounting our suspension parts. I cut and fish mouthed my two tubes that connect the front of the frame to the front of the engine plate. So I'm just gonna tack them in, double check the square and then tack them to the engine plate. Great? Yeah, man. Cover. So what I have here, we have two ATV axles. Neither one of them are the same, so they're two different <laughs> axles. Yep. <laughs> It'll be fine, right? We have this this uh, collar here. Collar is going to go there. We're going to weld it up. Then we're going to add on. Just I'm taking this off just for just for the heck of it. So then we add on our uh, pillow block, our sprocket. Our other pillow block, get on there. There we go. It's a tight fit. It is a tight fit, and that's what you want. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I'm going to move the, uh, both pillow blocks over to one side. And then whenever I add this axle, we're going to weld it up completely around. We're going to move the pillow blocks back to the outer edges. We're going to set up our sprocket where we want it. And then we're going to weld it up solid. And then we'll have our uh, front wheel drive, dude. Yeah, so not serviceable. Not serviceable. Which kind of sucks, but we're working in a 20 by 20 shop. We don't have a lathe. We don't have machining equipment. Yeah. Maybe one day. One day. I mean, we're already starting somewhere. Absolutely, which I want to cut some, uh, you know, our gussets and stuff would be sweet to cut out. So, But yes, we are making progress. But until then, it's still testing purposes only. Yes. And uh, we are going to have to shorten the axle some. One on each side. And we'll have an upper and lower A-frame. And we're going to have our little hub assembly right there. Which is not the prettiest thing, but it's going to be covered up by a tire. Yeah. I hope. 
So it's time to make some mounting brackets to go on the underside of our engine plate that our pillow blocks will mount to for our kind of four wheel drive uh, assembly. Uh, rather than cutting them out by hand, Langmuir Systems sent us their Crossfire Pro, which is this awesome DIY friendly uh, plasma table. You can check one out in the link in the description of this video. This will be the second time I've ever used it. The first time I uh, cut out a bottle opener and it turned out perfect except for I scaled it up way too big. So I'm excited to use this machine. Uh, let's do it. So I've designed my part in Fusion 360, which it's as simple as it could be. It's a rectangle with two holes in it. And I put it into Langmuir Systems fire control software. And I'm just kind of going through the, uh, the path here to make sure that I'm not gonna, that I'm gonna minimize waste while also not going off the edge of our quarter inch steel here. That being said, I think I'm ready to fire it up. I don't even know what to say. I'm a little speechless. This was way easier than trying to cut it out by hand and uh, it's a lot cleaner. Of course, it's not perfect. Uh, I could use a little bit of touch up on the wire wheel over there, but yeah, you wanna see if the bolt holes line up and everything? I'm impressed. Thanks, bro. So that's gonna work for us. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll cut out one more and we can go ahead and weld it up. Sweet. All right, gonna cut out number two. So I have my laser cut parts here, my brackets, and uh, there's just a little bit of uh, slag on the back side of these parts. So I'm just cleaning them up in the bench grinder, and then I can mock them up and tack them in. So these guys are going right underneath here. And look at that. It fits pretty much perfectly. Um, and so I can grab our uh, front wheel drive assembly bolt it on and we can figure out where we want to mount it and tack it in now i should be able to bolt the pillow blocks underneath here so I have my brackets here. I had to make a little modification for the sprocket to clear, but I'm ready to weld them to the underside of the uh, engine plate. Cover. Cover. Now I just need my uh, axle assembly. I can bolt it up. We can get some hubs on this thing. Do you want to try to lift it again? Sure. Two arm in it now. That's still definitely, nothing, it's definitely that's not bad. Here. That's not bad though. I could, For something that's four wheel drive and this much power. Yeah, I can pick it up with one arm. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, it looks like something too. Yeah, and those axles on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sweet. So we've reached a spot where we just can't proceed with the Bronco in today's episode because we're waiting on parts. Now we're waiting on Heim joints, those won't be here for another five days or so. And we're also waiting on more of these bearings that have clips in them, which also won't be here for another five or so days. Like we talked about, we have our square tubing hub, which is gonna fit really, really snug on that bearing. 
We'll be able to tap it, put some bolts in there to keep them from moving so everything will be serviceable and unboltable. But I, it's awesome. It's completely custom, so that's why it's taking so long for us to make moves on this thing. <clears throat> you can't go to the store and buy this, uh, buy this front end assembly, that's for darn sure. Uh, just pillow blocks, random ATV axles, and other bits and pieces from the uh, tractor supply. Um, but now, we are going to uh, make a little sidestep into uh, doing a little bit of rehabbing on the Cars and Cameras Pond. So it was actually our friend Charles who had this idea. He said, next time you have all the YouTube guys over, like Rather Be Welding and Redbeard's Garage and Junkyard Digs and whoever else, um, you should have the Cars and Cameras Fishing Tournament in the pond, which was such an awesome idea. Well, there are no fish in my pond because there's a thick, thick layer of algae and there's no oxygen getting in the pond. So there are a ton of frogs, there are some turtles, we haven't been able to catch any fish. But we're going to try to fix that today, or at least start fixing that, by putting in an aerator. So let's fire up the air mattress flotation device and uh, put this aerator in the pond and see what happens. Sound good? Yeah, man. You ready, bud? I'm ready. So what are you thinking, dude? I don't know. <laughs> Man, don't pop your air mattress, Holmes. I'm gonna try not to. <sighs> oh, I'm getting wet. I'm trying. <laughs> Man, there's no time to sunbathe. <laughs> Drop it here. Plop her in. All right, anchors away. <sighs> Parallel parking. Sweet. Wait a minute. Oh boy, don't pop your, uh, your thing there, Chief. It's squishy. It is so squishy over here. Uh, well, you know, 100 feet doesn't go very far. So we went like 80 feet into the center of the pond. Was I close to center? Yeah, somewhat. Good. Um, so we got to go run to the store and we got to get some PVC pipe. We got to put a, a nipple on the end to fit that hose and we need a trench take it all the way to the building and set it up with the uh the pump sounds like a plan yep this episode just got interesting <laughs> what do you got bud tell us well uh Old John got a little uh, happy with the shovel and hit a uh, water line. Sure did. Yeah. So it was a nice little geyser, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll just uh, put a little tea in there and shut off valve and all that stuff, and, and uh, it'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, we could even run water to the shop someday. We've been wanting water to the shop. And it's right here. It's right there. Who knew it was like... 15 feet from the shop exactly so our trench is looking just excellent other than that water so that means back to the store yeah so this red line is going to be our air line for pond aeration and the unit is going to be mounted to that post right there so we capped off one end of the water line and put a valve in the other side just gonna let that glue dry and turn the water back on and see what happens. So we're busting a hole in the wall right there to run a power cord through for the aerator. That was effective. There it is, bud. Yep. 
Well, it's not too loud, is it? Not too bad. I wonder if we'll be able to see the uh, aeration. Oh, yeah, you can totally see it, man. See it Already, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. Awesome. So our aerator is aerating. I was told that over the coming months, it'll help clear up the pond, get rid of some of that algae, um, and I can put some fish in there that'll eat some of that duckweed, duckweed, whatever you call it, and uh, we can go fishing, have the uh, Cars and Cameras Fishing Tournament. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Pick up a t-shirt at our website, cars-cameras.com to help support our future episodes. Check Ike out at Isaac, it'll be fine. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Thinking it's going to be uh, tough to pull that line through the uh, through the water. We'll see. Yeah, well, I'll help you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, this is like looks like the best place to uh, launch it. Um, Just don't pop your air mattress. I heard a critter. Yeah.